Hello and welcome to Mega Anime Reviews, and today, as the finale for Gundam Month, we're gonna take a look at Char's Counterattack, which also doubles as the grand finale of the Universal Stand Century as established by the three Gundam shows so far. While making Double Zeta, Tomino was allowed to make this movie, so plans were changed and the story took a very different direction than the one originally visioned. So does this movie justify the decision to change Double Zeta? Let's find out. It is the year 0093 of the Universal Century. After Judo Ostrich defeated Haman Khan in Double Zeta, the Earth Federation has established Londo Bill, an organization designed to hunt down the remnants of Neon Zeon. Only this time, Bright Noah is in charge, with Amuro Ray leading the mobile suit teams. Then Char Asimo returns, somehow magically recovering from being killed in an explosion back in Zeta. He now suddenly hates the Earth Nights, and like Haman, decides to save the Earth to protect nature. How? By dropping an entire asteroid into the Earth. Okay, now it's up to Amro and the Londoville organization to defeat Char and SAVE THE WORLD! The animation is spectacular. All the fights look good, the mobile suit has decent designs, and there's clean and smooth animation for everyone here. The music isn't very memorable, but there's one particular theme that does stand out from the rest. I don't know the name of it, so I'd like to know what it is. For the voice acting, we've come full circle. We started with Ocean Group in the original, Blue Water and Zeta, no dub in Double Zeta, and back to Ocean for this movie. And by god, this is one of the best dubs I've heard in an anime. Everybody from the original returns, plus a few new actors, and they give out amazing performances. The standouts are once again Brad Swaley as Amuro and Michael Cops as Char so the latter gets more stuff to do here than in the original. So no complaints in the dubbing. I, where I will complain is... everything else. The plot is already absurd, but the summary I gave a few seconds ago? Not explained at all in the movie. Or not explained enough. In fact, many things about the movie that suck ass. Char's heel face turn is never properly established or shown, depending on other people to justify it. It just seems random and comes completely out of nowhere and goes against his character in Zeta. I'm sure there's some novel or manga out there that explains it, but in my belief, if you need to read a manual before you enjoy something, then maybe you're doing something wrong there. I mean, why would we want to see character development when they can just say it happened? Many of the new characters have the briefest of explanations and backstories before they're killed off. They're usually very annoying or stupid when they're not being bland or uninteresting. For all of these, Quest and Hathaway suffer the worst. Quest is quite possibly the most annoying character of the entire Gundam franchise, having the most shallow motivations to join Char and wanting to kill Chanagi, one of the other one of the two characters that I actually like, because she wanted to be with Amuro. She's like Puru, only she never goes to the character development that Puru did. Hathaway isn't really all that annoying throughout the movie, but the moment he kills one of the characters in combat for killing Quest, already turned him into a scrappy. Honestly man, what the fuck were you thinking? Did you do that? Adults never understand. That's why the Earth is on the brink of being wiped out! Hathaway, what are you doing? Why even have these new characters anyway? I thought this was the story of Amuro and Char's rivalry, so wouldn't it make more sense to focus on characters who were a part of it, like Sailor or Camille? Okay, Sailor's Japanese voice actress was clearly unavailable, but what about Camille? He was Char's protege, and was supposed to bring about the next stage of the new type of evolution or something. So what the hell is he doing that's so important? Was he dragged into one of the Super Robot War games and is currently training Shin Asuka to be a better person? I don't know, at least a quick shot or explanation would have been nice, considering how much importance he has to Char's life. If he was here, he would have made a nice counterpart to Guinea, the other new character that I like. It would have been far more interesting than Hathaway or Quest here. Anyway, the two biggest problems with the movie 
is the refusal to give any new characters a sense of development or purpose. The ones from the previous shows, including the wimpy ass Cameron Bloom from the original, clearly have more importance, but the new characters have no importance or impact on the narrative whatsoever. The final battle would have gone on the same regardless of any of these people, so it's pointless to focus on them. The other big problem is throughout the movie there are these completely random monologues that show up out of nowhere. These are interesting, but is it worth it to have these at the cost of character development that could have been used for the new characters? No! It's lazy writing at its finest. Char's counterattack is one of the worst Gundam products ever produced. I can't believe that Double Zeta gets so much crap that this movie gets a free pass. Ugh. Well, see you on the next Mega Anime Reviews, and thank you for enjoying Gundam Month. What's this? The psycho frames are resonating. So much willpower focused here. Will it overload? That being said, I'm not sensing fear. It's more like, how can I explain? Warmth, and even a sense of peace. Fascinating. Even those with the warmest of hearts still have the potential to destroy the Earth. Why can't you see that, armor? I do! That's why we have to show the world this light within the human heart. Axis has changed course! It's moving away from the Earth!